Is he putting, he's putting his mouth on you? Um, yeah, he's been getting his mouth on me a lot. Yeah, you got pretty serious bruise there, man. That's, that's not good. Yeah. He actually had him down yesterday, he had him down on the ground. Mm -hmm. He had a couple on the back of his neck even. And I just don't know how to make him figure out how to defend and correct at the same time. Right. Because as soon as I walk outside or Teddy hears my voice, he stops. Yeah. So. You'd be nice. <laughs> yeah, right? And he's actually... He's How's it going? Doing, yeah. He's been doing better with um, the three or the four-year-old. Mm -hmm. um, Leo is still pulling on his tail and stuff, and he kind of nips at him a little bit, but it's nothing aggressive. It's not like mm -hmm. the quarreling that we had last time you were here. You know, right. They kind of got into a little sparring mm -hmm. match, but... Um, oh. Well... Yeah. So I mean, like that's that's pretty that's yeah. pretty darn serious. Um, so well, tell me how this goes. Like, do, like describe it to me, because usually it's when you're taking them out to go to the bathroom, right? Yeah. Um. So whenever I've been so yesterday, um, we were me and my brother were riding the scooter around, mm -hmm. and we were going up there where his chain is, mm -hmm. and he nipped nipped at me mm -hmm. so I didn't hit him but I threatened to hit him with my scooter mm -hmm. then that made him listen but whenever I whenever I put him on the leash and I didn't have the little stick on it he tried biting mm -hmm. no when he's when he's when he's biting how what like is it is is he? I mean, obviously, I see he's putting his mouth on you. Like that's that's yeah. plain as day. Yeah. Um, but it, he's not he's not like biting like he's trying to hurt you. He's probably biting more like he's trying to play. Yes. Right. Okay. He tries to mount him. Yeah. Well. So. Um, so your question statement, however, however, it ended up being about um, to correct him while defending himself. I. The the the, cor the the correction, like if he defends himself, the correction is obviously I implied in that situation. Okay. I mean, like um, whenever, like there's a video that we just put out with the, where I got attacked yeah, by a dog and everything. Well, I mean, like I, I defended myself in the mm -hmm. situation and I didn't go and specifically correct him, right. but the fact that I put myself in a position of power. Right. Is correction enough? And or psychologically, he doesn't know how to right. defend against it. Absolutely. He's because there's been times. The other day, I hey. walked out. I heard him screaming, and I went out the back door, and Lee was actually bent over, and Teddy was on his back like this, mm -hmm. and you could see he had been kind of mouthing at the back of his head. And I obviously, as soon as I walked outside and I hollered, Teddy jumped down. He was a perfect angel at that point. He yeah. doesn't behave like that. So even if I walk with Lee with him on a chain you know we take him out to go to the bathroom like okay you walk i'll watch see what happens he doesn't do anything so it's like mm -hmm. <laughs> i don't know how to help lee fix this so when we're dealing with it uh, i know we talked about it um we're dealing with the timing principle uh, of dogs having 1.3 seconds to associate mm -hmm. cause and effect the reason <clears throat> that we use those markers, the good and the no, to be able to bridge the gap of that time. In almost all situations, that's like we, we only do that with the positives. Like I tell you good and then I will come and reward you at my own pace and that's fine. And most of the time we don't do that with the correction. Unless the situation is severe enough. And especially in the, if the situation is to the point where the dog is specifically doing it when you're not watching because they think that they're going to get away with it. Right. You know, um, poodles are smart enough for that, you know, like they are. I mean, he's, he's, he's sheep doodle? Uh, Bernadoodle. Bernadoodle, Bernadoodle that's right. Well, and, and Bernese are very dominant dogs. That video mm -hmm. that, I was, that, that I was, we were just talking about, um, that was a Bernese mix. And um, my dog Buster was a Bernese mix, and he was, uh, I referred to him in the, in the video at some point. Now, maybe not that particular sure. uh, one that you saw, but uh, in the full length one that's on the Patreon page, I, I talk about him. And 
they there's something about that breed and they are just seriously seriously dominant dogs if they can you know obviously when they lose and they don't actually achieve the dominance and they'll chill out about that but they have a lot of drive towards it so in that situation i think that even for you guys going out and following through with that and 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 correcting in a more serious way even if the correction takes longer than that 1.3 seconds is going to be uh, a reasonable thing to do because at this point he's saying well as long as you don't as long as you're not standing right here i can do whatever i want right you know and as long as i don't get caught i can do whatever i want and that's not that's not the attitude you want so the dumb thing we should just punch that dog right in the nose and try to bite him well i mean you gotta do something i mean i'll go listen when when it comes down to it sometimes especially whenever you're dealing with the younger kid and the dog the dog recognizes the authority from you and from you but they just don't see right. him as authority and dogs speak a sim- simpler language and i'm not the you know i'm not one to lightly say haul off and whoop the dog but the but the thing about it is is like he doesn't have any respect for lee right. at, at this point right now and and since i mean like it's not something that we can really have a, a conversation with them about is is lee the the most full fix to this problem is lee's going to have to That's, show to him that right. you know that he that he can take care of himself right. now i do i do like the option so that so that we don't get carried away with that i do like the option of the stick yeah so that you can so that you can keep space and you can require and demand space from him because if this helps you do that that's fine um if he needs something that is not so blunt and maybe a little sharper you know what i mean something that like you know, whenever we were kids, I mean, like they, mom would always ask us to go. They, get the she'd, <laughs> she'd get, she'd have us get the switch and yeah. everything. And I tell you what, I picked the, the heaviest one I could get because I'd much rather the thump than the whap. You know what I mean? And so now the whap does less damage in general, so that's good. Um, I mean, so we don't want to get, we don't want to get super excited about fighting with the dog, for sure. Right. Um, but we also don't want to dismiss it altogether because in, you know, in the situation we were just talking about, it's like, I'd, had I not manhandled the right. dog, right. I'd have come right. out with a whole bunch of holes and that is my job and everything like that. But one of these days, I mean, with bruises That's like awesome. he's got right now and everything, one of these days, it'll go too far. Yeah, this one. And we don't want it. We don't want it to do that. And so, good yeah. Here with Dude, that's a bummer. I'm sorry. I'm sorry that, that that's happening to you. And this is not a. That's not a joke at all. Because then so, he'll so, take him out, and it's it's like he'll go pee fine, and then as soon as he's done relieving himself, well, then it's like, okay, my next target. Mm-hmm. Well, what we could work on is a little bit of leash work leash handling so that you can get better at shortening up the leash as he so if he goes out and he does his potty and everything and then all of a sudden the potty's done and he goes boom and he wants to come right at you and in a playful manner whether it's playful or not that's not the point um is if we can get you to the point where you know how to close up and shorten up your leash enough and if he comes in and he won't and he won't listen to you then you can just well, you can just step on the leash so, he, well, the problem is we, we he have. hates that leash so bad. He's ate every damn leash. Mm-hmm. How many how many leashes we went through? A lot. And so, that's when I'm not on duty. So he's so he's going out. He's going out without the leash. Is the no, idea? No, no, no. He's got a leash, but he he's just, got a cable. He knows he hates that leash, so he destroys it on right. purpose just to be an a hole. Yeah. He doesn't want leashes. So the only one I think she has right now is a retractable leash because he's chewed every other damn one. Yeah. Right. Because he knows. Yeah. Well, I mean, the retractable is not the worst answer anyway. It, aside from the fact that they're very difficult to grip, but if the dog runs at you and you let the retractable do its job and mm-hmm. pull the leash back, first of all, as it snaps back, it might mm-hmm. it might snap him out of some things. Yeah, um, I like that you got the button control so if he is getting yeah. thing, you can right. react quicker. Now, 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 with the retractables, that's the tricky part, is just whenever they're actually coming towards you. Yeah. That's, that's, you know, like right. you got to time it just exactly right. right. And, I, and I don't think that that's specifically reliable right. in the situation. What I, what I would, what I would say is, is that, you know, prioritizing, keeping, 
you know, because uh, I, I think you guys, we worked with you whenever we had the canes, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, and the canes, fine. Um, I've been using these. I got a, one of my clients actually makes them for me they're and everything, cool. and they're really, they're really cool. And they have some reach, you know, yeah. because, I mean, well, you're nowhere close to me. I can poke you in the nose if I want. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, huh? I think so. Ours is in there. It's about that long. Did you get one of these? No, oh. it's got a bear. Go grab it, Link. Oh, the uh, okay, the other the other stick ones that it's I got. Yeah. Stick with the rubber. Right, right, rubber yeah. The it's ones. like a cane, but it's a walking stick. Does he respect it yeah. whenever oh, yeah. you're whenever you're holding it? Yeah. He does respect that. The, the kids respect it when I drive a holding stick. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's it's been used for many, no. many <laughs> Right. But so uh, having that is going to be a big deal, and of course you want to know how to wield it, right? You want to be able to, so that it's effective. So that it's effective, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, we just started having him take that out with him. His, even my mom has had to run out, and, mm -hmm. and she's like, "I heard him screaming. I ran out there, and Teddy had him down on the ground again." It's like, it's, yeah. It's, it's awful. I just try to tell him that he needs to. He just, doesn't have any well, kind of and I, I try authority. To... He doesn't try. He just doesn't. I don't think he tries hard to fight him off. I do. Yeah. Yes. Well, and then like the other day when he was bent over, I was like, well, you can't bend over because that's just kind of giving him dominance. But mm -hmm. he's a Same. you know seventy pound dog. It... Right. Well, I mean, it, what we can do is we can we can make sure that you know how to do these things um, and, and that you know which ones that you can do the easiest and the most effective you can get some sort of practice at it and I'll be the dog in the situation and then you can poke me with the stick you know so that so that we can see and so you can practice on it whenever it's not Teddy necessarily so that you can keep that together so first of all sometimes these sticks are I mean I know yours is a little lighter but mine's I guess it's a pretty serious stick, and it's not real easy to be, to wiggle around and get, you know, to get some force on it and everything, and so sometimes you got to learn how to grip it to where you can shorten it up and you can be a little quicker with it so that you can keep them at a distance, because if, I, if I'm holding this thing like that and I need to move it from left to right, it's not very easy to do, and it takes a lot more strength from my forearm and everything, whereas if I shorten it up like this and I kind of tuck it to my forearm like that, then I can wiggle it around real fast and that will help keep go ahead in the mornings um i put him on his chain mm -hmm. like whenever i put him out there in the mornings um like whenever i take him out sometimes he'll try and bite me but mm -hmm. like in the, whenever i bring him back in that's when he tries to fight me how, how what's described to me the difference between um in the mornings like he'll nip at me like whenever I first put him out there, come try and nip at me. Okay, so use my arm and and pretend like you're, like this is uh, like this is your uh, uh, Teddy's mouth, right? And, and and show me what the nipping looks like. Nipping. Like he'll like that. He comes he comes here and gets yeah. you like that. Yeah. Okay. Um. <clears throat> and like sometimes he'll actually try and bite me. But most of the time he doesn't do that. No, no. It's just more no. nipping. But those look like bites, baby, on your arm. No, these are from whenever I don't put them on his chain. Mm -hmm. So there's a difference in behavior then. So when you have him on the leash is when he's doing this. Yes. But when you're going just to put him on his chain because we're going to leave him outside for a little while for some fresh air, mm -hmm. those are where he's more of a playful nip. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, which we don't want him to necessarily do that either. either. Yeah. You know, because that's that's often either a hurting behavior or him saying, "I want you to get away from me." So, what 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 I would suggest is, I mean, and you can get something smaller than that if it's easier for you to use or whatever. But to have some sort of a, I mean, like, no, not make two ways about it. I mean, it's defense. <laughs> you know, because if he's coming at you and he's he doesn't need to be putting bruises on them. And if he's getting to the point where he's hurting you to that degree and everything, I mean, there's going to be trainers out there that say, hey, don't, you know, like you should never physically correct a dog. Well, I'm not one of those, you know, and if you need to, and if he needs to understand that he can't do that to you, sometimes you have to be the one to tell him. And that's a bummer. You know, it would be much better if he listened, but we gave him the opportunity Still listen, and he's not. You know, he's still he's taking advantage of you, and so you gotta you gotta stand up and say, hey, you're wanting, you're not gonna take advantage of me. So getting your implement, you know, your defense stick in the process, and 
practice more at keeping him at a distance to keep it from escalating to the point where you have to actually defend yourself will be a good start in that. Um, but I'd, I'd kind of like to see... I kind of I kind of like to see if, if if I can see anything happening to to get an idea. No, no, take your stick. Just take him on the leash and take him out. Like, he'll he'll bite you whenever no one's out there. That's where we're gonna stand in here and watch. Right. Well, I don't I don't mind if you take the stick with you. I. I if you can, if you can get it done with the stick, like we don't get extra points by getting him attacked again. Uh, if you can, if you can keep him where you need to keep him with the stick. So here, do me, do me a favor, real quick. Is instead of holding it straight up and down like this, and this is an okay way to hold it for some things, but uh, if you're going to do that, use the stick like shield and block him left and right like this. But it. Another another good thing to do would be to grab the stick about halfway down and grab it overhand. Right. Yeah. Except for one one thing. Here we go. Put your hand over the top of it. See see how see how easy that is. Yeah. It's stiff. Now you can move it real fast, and you can actually keep up with the dog and just keep him at arm's length. Because if he can't get close to you, he can't bite you. So that's a good way to hold the stick. And then you can take a big old long stick and make it shorter. To where you all all I need is just a couple feet away from me of space to keep him, you know, to keep him from being able to put his mouth on me or jump on me or anything like that. And if he decides to ignore that, poke him, you know. I uh, you ain't going uh, I'm not gonna get mad at you for poking the dog. You know, I mean I'm sure that there's gonna be some people who see this video and start to fuss with me about it, but I'll I'll fight that battle. <laughs> because well, those people already. those people are just naive and they don't realize that 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 right there here come come here camera <laughs> this right here show them all the bruises okay. this is the kind of thing that can be caused by not being willing to discipline a dog not saying that you guys are doing that right. you know this is just this is a this is a conversation between him and the dog right you know between lee and teddy so um so yeah do you just go ahead and, and do your thing and i'm going to see and if it turns out you get in trouble i'll be right out there Huh? You probably need to go outside for this. So oh, to see? Walking around, yeah. I think. Because well, he doesn't seem to do it in here. That's that's what I'm saying. Okay. We were gonna I was going to oh, watch through the gotcha, window gotcha, gotcha. just to see how he handles it.
That was perfect. I saw what you were doing. You, he, he got in. He started to get in on your on your uh, arm and everything like that. But you, you came around and you weren't harsh with him or anything, but you just said, get out. You know? Hey. He definitely needs the link out of here. So, because when it gets to the point where you can pull it and all three of these things tighten, it's too it's too loose. This this collar, I'm taking a prong out of it because it's too loose. Okay. Yeah. Because and that and that right there will make a little bit of a difference in and of itself. Because if you don't if the if you don't have the authority with the collar, oh, hey. If you don't have the authority with the collar because it's not functioning to its fullest, then, yeah, you're, you, had then, then you have to add so much more force to it. The idea is to not have to add any force to it. So, because he started pulling and then he locked it up and he got to pull all the way till the collar closed up and he still felt like he could pull. Whereas okay. right there, with it closed up a little bit more, with just, just the difference of one length, you just saw it right there. He locked it up and Teddy started to pull, but then he got to the point to where if he pulled harder, it was going it was going to cause the problem to, you know, it, it was going to meet resistance on his body, not on the back of the chain. Gotcha. You know, okay. and that's that's the key right there is you want the neck to stop the collar from tightening, okay. not the uh, not the chain itself. If okay. it gets all the way closed up, then the dog, then it's just a nice comfortable way to, another nice comfortable way to pull. Okay. You know, so that'll make a big difference right there. So okay. I was telling Lee that he did the right thing because Teddy started getting up on his hand okay. and, and he got a little bit farther along than I wanted, but then Lee picked up the stick and said, no. And, and, and gave him a little poke and it wasn't a, it wasn't a, uh, too much force or anything like that, okay. but it was enough to get him back off. And that's all we need right. is we need enough to stop the behavior. Right. It's the, the principles called minimal necessary force, but people get focused on the minimal, but they don't always put enough emphasis on the necessary, necessary. you know, because because the force needs to be necessary. If it's enough to get him to stop doing what he's doing, you don't have to go any harder, but if it's not stopping him, go harder. You know, that way that way you can you can understand where that line is. And we just try not to be unfair and, and make it to where we're just over correcting the dog all the time. But uh but you what you did was great. And you just so you just have your tool with you that gives you power and allows you to keep your calm a little bit better and to get less nervous, then um, whenever he starts acting up, then Get him to the end of the leash and say, hey, you know, because if you're holding the button and you're poking him away, he eventually gets to a point, place where he has to stop and he has to just give up. And that's what we want. And it's not about beating him into submission. It's just about getting him to the point where he gives up on whatever it was he's doing. We can start over and start again. And then, and, and then, then we take our time and we let him learn as we go along. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. You feel good about that? Mm -hmm. Good deal. So we're going to leave you out here again. I mean, I think Dave's going to stay out here and videotape a little bit. But um, I, I want to see if he gives you any trouble again, and I want to see you handle it. So remember, don't, don't be afraid to choke up on the stick and get, get closer to the end where the stick's shorter. You know, because you got, you got a big old long extension right there. If, that, if that's hard to handle, then, then it'll make it harder for you to keep him at a distance. We'll just keep walking him around and we'll see if this is the, the ticket to give you enough control to be able to keep him from offending you. And that's your right. He doesn't have the right to offend you. Just because he's a dog. So, let's, let's just let's go, ahead and go back in. Because, yeah. Should I just stay up here on the porch, I guess? And, yeah, that's great. All right.
Well, I tell you what, even after just that one little poke that you gave him, it seems to me that he is giving you quite a bit more respect. He's giving you space, and space is respect in the animal kingdom. So if you can get him to give you space, and, and uh, then he is giving you respect. And if, if, some, if you just need a little something extra to give you a little bit of help so that you can control it easily, then then that, that might be all you need. You know, so I would take your stick back. We have other sticks. Some of these are, are shorter, so they'll be a little bit more your size. These two right here, I think, are the shortest ones. Yes, sir. Yeah, and this will also be pretty light, too. Yeah, this that one I like. How do you feel about that? Yeah, this one feels nice. All right, that one's yours. So, hey, do you, no problem. Do you want this one back? No, like that, one, that, that one's for your mom and your dad and everything. But sometimes, sometimes it's okay to have a physical representation of I, I don't know call it your authority your courage your you know whatever but it's something that makes you feel good about doing the job that you have to do and if that helps then I'm I'm happy for you to have it cool so um, Leah let your mom have this one and then just get the feel of it and that's yours to keep period so I would just keep that with you and that's your your, your stick of your stick of authority plus two <laughs> Teddy, we know you're a good dog. Why aren't you being a good dog? Huh? Can I have a kiss? Yeah, and and the and it'll get easier and easier. Like if you if you conquer it now, you might never have this problem with him again. Just for the next little little while, you bring your stick with you and and be strong. You know, stand stand firm in your in yourself and require space because if. if I get, I get space for him, and that's respect. And I do that a couple times, and he will say, no, I'm not going to get in space anymore, because he knows that I'll defend my own space. And that's, that's what that So, yeah, that wind is picking up. Yeah, I imagine. But, yeah, I mean, that's a price for the view, though. Yeah. I know, you guys got a great view. Um, so, if that's what it takes, and uh, just get used to using it. I mean, uh, mine, I actually went and got a hold of one of my old bosses, who's a... Um, he, uh, he's a martial arts guy, and I asked him which martial art he teach me how to use a bow staff properly, and uh, that might be a fun thing to do as well. And then this, you know, and then this could be just a tool all day, every day. I, you know? I used to go to martial arts, yeah. but um, we, I did the virus Yeah. <laughs> right. Well. Yeah, these are these are problems to solve for sure. Yeah. So, but yeah, just get used to using it. I mean, you'll 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 realize at some point in time that you know, like you can, like how to do it easily. You know, instead of going over here and having to turn and twist and everything, you'll get used to moving it around. And uh, and then hopefully you'll get to the point where you you know you can start to respect your own space even with it. Because I mean, he comes he gets off leash sometimes. I mean, A little bit. Yeah. yeah. Does he, I mean, does he run at this point? Uh, we've had a couple incidents where he goes down in the hay field and comes back covered in cockleburs, so we've, we've well, limited that. Yeah. Um, and we had some cat eating, uh, cat poop eating yeah. uh, incidents that gave him diarrhea, so we don't let him off leash much anymore. Well, honestly. if that ends up being the case, that's fine. Yeah. Um, but you'll be able to give him quite a bit more space, you know, um, and, and then eventually you get to the point where you can start to hurt in places, you know, so. <laughs> I'm interested in this reaction. No, you've got a stick. I don't want you. <laughs> so, you get to the point where you can start to hurt him, he can have all the space he wants. He can have all the leash he wants. So, 
and it won't be something that causes him to freeze up. Right. But if it does right now, great. Because if the stick represents that much authority to him, then the stick in your hand is the authority that you need. So. That's, a, that's the same thing as, you know, the argument against, you know, the, the whole completely non-corrective training styles, which I don't think are good for the dog. Like, I don't even think that they're healthy for the dog because the dog doesn't end up with any measure of skin. They're completely, like, they're, they're completely fragile to the world. And, and anything that they come across is, is potential for trauma or breaking them or, or scaring them to a point where it causes issue and all of that stuff. And it's like, no, like I, I would much rather raise something that had some, had some metal to it, you know, had yeah. some sand. And that whenever it came across something, it didn't have to freak out right off the bat. Like it could sit and endure a little bit of something before it had to resort to violence or running away or freezing up or any of those things. And when they're too gentle with them, they just don't develop that, you know. Now it's not obviously not a free license to go out there. Yeah, no, I'm not worried about that with you guys for sure, but we are on camera, so. <laughs> yeah. Other people will see this. No. Daddy, come here. You're a good boy. And also, when you have that authority and you have that respect, it makes it a whole lot easier and a whole lot more frequent for you to be able to love on the dog. Mm -hmm. You know, if you didn't feel like the dog was going to disrespect you every time it came around, you'd probably, it'd probably be a lot easier to be more affectionate and loving towards the dog, wouldn't you think? Yeah. You know, you probably would enjoy that if you didn't, if it wasn't going to cause you bruises. <laughs> you know, like I don't intend to love anybody that bruises no, me at all. No, no, way. So, I mean, I, that's going to be the biggest part of it. And then you just keep getting good and basically all the same stuff that we talked about before, you know, learning to walk properly. And you can do the walking just the same with this. In fact, it works pretty well. Nope. You have the opportunity to keep up on its own and try not to lock the thing up unless you absolutely have to. But you just change your direction. You say, nope. And if he's ignoring it, then you press the button. If he's not ignoring it, then you don't have to press the button. Um, you know? Like, I got, I got that down yeah. with that. Sit. Um, because the other leashes, mm -hmm. even, um, it's not that his, the, his collar was too loose. He would, like, Yeah, well, I mean, and, and there's nothing wrong with this tool. Yeah, this is this is a good tool, and if you can use it, and you can operate it properly, then this tool is better, as good or better as any of the other ones. The only thing is for a brand new dog that doesn't have any training on it, I do tend to advise just regular flat leashes because those leashes will become loose. Whereas this one will always have just a little bit of tension, yeah. but the dogs get used to that very quickly and it doesn't end up being a huge big deal. But whenever you are teaching the walk at the very beginning, 
it, there is some there is some advantages to having a regular leash um, as opposed to this. But one, once you get past that initial stage, then it doesn't matter at all. Like if you can wield this and this doesn't become cumbersome to you and hard to handle, then this is a great option. Okay. You know, I just, you know, usually by the time that people are ready for this, they don't need, they're not asking me questions right, anymore and so right. the, they can just make their own decision and I'm fine with that okay. um, we just die that's actually one of those things that I don't discuss that often because mm -hmm. um, most of the time I don't ever make it back right. <laughs> enough right. to to, sure. to do it because people tend to be fine with what they have and sometimes the people don't want to tell me either they're like they should I want to say something right. if you're doing what you're doing then right. just own it right. yeah this right. is great Okay. Nope. No problem. Um, Eddie. Um, be on the TV, any guys. Things that you got going on, or? everybody that we just don't lean on folks because it's free you know so if you if you if you need to you can use the stick and, and kind of use it like a lever if you put it up underneath him and straighten it out it'll make it move you know that's the cool thing about sticks like this is you don't actually have to be as strong you know, because like here push on the bottom that's right it's hard for me to hold like that now try to push try to push the stick <laughs> I had no idea so. he was even up there. <laughs> so well, that's good though. All right. I mean, um, yeah. If you want, we can talk about that. I mean, we've only been here for forty-five minutes or something. Um, Fifty bucks. Cool. All right. Yeah. We done? Yeah.